Do you know why there is two versions of Chinese? What are the differences between the simplified Chinese and also the traditional Chinese? The simplified Chinese were created because it is easier to learn and write. In the era of 1950s and 1960s, when the literacy rate was quite low in mainland China, the PRC government decided to come up with ways to simplify some of the more complicated Chinese characters so that more workers are able to read and execute jobs. But do you also know the Chinese characters already existed long before the Qin Dynasty? And Chinese characters were once very close to abolishments. Hi everyone and welcome to Fearless Passport. My name is Evan and today I would like to bring you through the complete history of simplified Chinese and also the traditional Chinese. Before this video, I would appreciate an early thumbs up and also subscribe so that the YouTube algorithm will push this video further and benefit more people who are interested in the Chinese culture. And thank you very much. So now we will hop into the history of the simplified Chinese and also the traditional Chinese. Remember in the past video, we mentioned that Hokkien and Teochew is one of the oldest, most conservative Chinese dialects that may have descended from the central plain of China. In the old China, there weren't any standardizations of common tongue like our modern Mandarin, Hu Tonghua, as the lingua franca. Our ancestors speak and write differently according to regions, and that explains why there were too many alternative forms of a Chinese characters representing the same meaning. Before standardizations, the simpler Chinese characters are known as shorthands, which existed alongside the orthodox traditional characters. And a popular shorthand is a type of varying characters that is easier to write. The orthodox characters were considered formal and proper, while the shorthands were popular, however informal. Because there were countless alternative forms of characters, the dictionary customarily listed the traditional orthodox Chinese characters as well as their common variations. In some cases, only popular variant characters would receive equal status with the orthodox characters, both considered proper and correct in the writing system. However, the real movement to simplify and standardize the Chinese characters began after the fall of Qing dynasties. In the May 4th movement in 1990, Chinese anti-imperialist reformers strike out a cultural and political protest to replace the classical Chinese with the written vernacular Chinese. And this eventually led to the adoptions of Beijingese as the basis. The famous scholars such as Qian Xuanhong and Lu Xun took part in a new culture movement where they desperately support the simplifications of Chinese scripts and it is perceived that the Chinese characters were an obstacle for the country to progress as a whole. The Republic of China first drew out a list of simplifications by selecting popular shorthands that were already widespread. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, the areas which the Chinese communists controlled were known as liberation zones, Chu. and for this reason, the simpler characters that the party encouraged to use were known as liberation character, Zi. By the time the PRC was founded in 1949, a lot of groundwork for simplification had already been laid. However, in the beginning, Mao Zedong believed that China must abolish the characters to lift the literacy rate and follow the practice of the world by adopting Chinese alphabets. But first, they must simplify the characters through multiple standardizations and prepare the public for the eventual adoptions of romanizations. So, a language reform research committee is formed and they are the one who chose the standard form of characters out of all of the variants and eliminated the rest of the more complicated Chinese characters. So for example, xie, 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 xie. All of these characters carry the same sound and meaning, so they will merge into the most common variants with the simpler structures. And for this reason, the committee chose the easiest characters, xie, this one. After standardizations, the complicated words are recreated in help to help in writing with lesser strokes and also components. Arrangements of variants and simplifications of the characters were very popular and well received by general public, and the characters now are known as Zi, which are the standardized Chinese characters 
used in the mainland China, Malaysia, Indonesia and Singapore, while the traditional characters are used in Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan. And that explains why some of the Chinese, especially older folks in Southeast Asia who came to the Nanyang, they do not speak the standardized Mandarin because Mandarin wasn't standardized until the 1950s where most of our great grandfather already migrated to Southeast Asia so they can only retain their original mother tongue such as Hakka, Hokkien, Hainan, Xinhua or Cantonese depending on which regions that they came from in China. The traditional Chinese writing conveys one word through strokes and also components. Therefore, it is actually not easy to pronounce Chinese characters without understanding some of the compounds in the first place. However, in 1958, an economist turned linguist named Zhou Yongguang invented Han Yu Pinyin, which is a romanized spelling system that linked the ancient Chinese writing to the modern age. The pinyin, which means spelled sound, utilized 26 letters of Roman alphabets with four tones in order to better connect China with other countries. Pinyin was adopted by the Chinese government in 1958 and it was promoted along with the simplified Chinese characters to improve the literacy rates of Chinese community. At the same time, encourage everyone to use Mandarin, Putonghua, as the national language. So why there is two types of phonetic system to learn Chinese? One is the pinyin, another one is the Chinese characters look like this, known as zhu yin. The name zhu yin, bo po mo fo, comes from the first four letters of the system, bo po mo fo. The zhu yin alphabet was introduced after the Xinhai revolutions in 1911. It consists of 37 phonetic symbols and four tone marks to transcribe all possible sounds in Mandarin. So I will show you what is the difference between zhu yin and pin yin. Let's take ni, hao, ma as an example. It means how are you. So in pin yin, it would be ni, hao, ma. This is third intonation, third intonation, and this is the first, first intonation. But in zhu yin, it would be written like this. Third intonation, ni, and i, ni, hao. This representing h, and a, o, the intonation, and ma representing and, and this is a, a, so m, a, ma, and my writing here is the simplified Chinese and a simplified one. But in traditional one, ma would be written like this. Ma and ni hao is still the same. So you can see um, they are overlapped between, only ma is different. Ni hao is the same between simplified and traditional Chinese. And we must understand that both Zhu Yin and Pin are not different phonetic systems. In fact, Pin Yin is actually uh, Zhu Yin alphabets written in Roman ABCD characters. Zhu Yin is still remains in Taiwan, and the PRC changed from Zhu Yin to Pin Yin simply because they wanted to use alphabet symbols which are already familiar to foreigners and also China's own minority groups. The traditional Chinese characters obviously have more strokes compared to the simplified Chinese. Here I will show you my handwriting of both traditional and simplified Chinese characters. On the left side is a traditional one, while on the right side is the simplified characters. You will see there are so many strokes and how complicated it is in the traditional characters. But the traditional one, the complicated characters, is way more meaningful in comparison with its simplified counterparts. And something for reminder, in case you are working or studying in China, it is better to opt for the simplified Chinese instead of the traditional Chinese characters. 
and thank you for watching. I hope this long video gave you more understanding of how simplified Chinese characters emerge from the traditional orthodox Chinese to the simpler writing systems. If you find this video helpful, do share this video to your friends, share this to people who are learning Chinese at this stage, and give me a like, comment, and turn on for the notification bell. And do you know how to write in Mandarin? And do you write in simplified Chinese or the traditional one? Let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!